Go ahead and take a look at some of the fresh new content, instrument enhancements, and new MIDI functions found in Cubase Pro 10. There are six new media libraries that we can access just by clicking on Media tab to loops. We have Analog House. Blockbuster, which could be used for film, TV, and games. We also have Hip Hop Vault. If we wanted to go to Mystic Spaces for more experimental and avant-garde. Raw Ambience. as well as Soul Assembly. Now with working with content from the Lower Zone Media Bay, we could take just a region of content and drag and drop that directly onto a track that easily. Groove Agent SE5 has been updated with a lot of new functionality. It can be resized. If you want it to be full screen. And it has a library of new fresh sounds, including laser beams and the kit. So when we want to look at some of the new enhancements, we can see a new MIDI keyboard. The number of samples of velocity layers per pad has quadrupled to be 32 velocity layers. And we go to our VST instrument outputs. We can now see that we will have double the number of outputs to 32 stereo outs. If we wanted to load up different libraries, we could now click on the browser to the right. Here we could see all of our available libraries and we'll listen to some of our laser beam sounds. So we'll play. And if I wanted to go to load up a different kit, just double click here and we could go to our patterns. So if you want to do more soundtrack type stuff with different instrument samples. Let's try Haywire. And now if we wanted to play a particular. Or let's load up Sweet Grapefruit. So if we wanted to just kind of play different grooves here. Now if I wanted to replace just like a kick drum sample, we can not only see our different kits, but we can see instruments, styles, MIDI patterns, as well as a browser. So we could replace all of our own samples or use just different kicks from different kits here. So I could double click. Could just replace the kick that easily. So lots of great enhancements with new laser beam set and new functionality. A new acoustic kit has been added as well and we'll call this the kit. So if we wanted to look at it, we could play different styles. So high resolution, multi-velocity layer drum kit. And what's great about this is we can have different MIDI effects. So if you wanted to have MIDI delays or rudiments, we could have that set up on a pad by pad basis. When we look at the mixer for our particular instrument, we can see not only the ability to have four bands of parametric EQ, compression, tape saturation, and an envelope shaper for transient design on every single source, plus the ability of loading multiple effects directly here. But sometimes we may realize that as we work with that, that we may want to take our mixer settings that we have and expand it into Cubase. So what we could do is right click on the icon here and choose to export 
and the mixer and effects to Cubase, and we'll see our Cubase mixer grow to automatically accommodate all of the new sounds. And as we do this, we could play different patterns, and we could select our patterns, and we could have different levels of complexity or dynamics directly there with our patterns. So if you want a great acoustic drum sample set, you could again just come directly to the instrument and see the kit. People wanted to be have more flexible operations when using chord pads. So if we have a chord pad set up, we can now just trigger a particular instrument here using the chord pads. And let's say if I had two different tracks that were record enabled or monitored enabled, we could trigger both pads globally using the chord pads. But people wanted to have a little more flexibility. So if we come directly to our chord pad output mode, we could check this so that it's not illuminated. Now when I trigger the chord pads, it's not routed to a particular instrument until we physically set the chord pads as a MIDI input. So if I want it to play and have just one voice on the lower track and chord pads triggered on the upper track, we can now have a dedicated chord pad input. Some of the settings for the chord pads have also been changed with the new graphic user interface overhaul of Cubase as well to be clearer and more obvious. One of the things that we wanted to do was to also have new user interface enhancements for take advantage of the high DPI scaling of Patchop as well as Retrolog. People have always wanted more expressive MIDI capabilities. And the earlier versions of Cubase introduced something called note expression, where we could take an individual MIDI note and have different controllers do different functions on a note by note basis, as opposed to a channel basis, which was originally set in the MIDI specification. Since we've done this, companies such as Rolly have come out with controllers to actually take advantage of this. And the MIDI specification has recently been updated to take advantage of MIDI polyphonic expression so that a single note can have independent panning or tuning or filter sweeps depending upon the settings of the actual instrument. So now when we go to Pad Shop, we can have dedicated MPE banks. So we could have an MPE sounds as well as when we go to our retro log, we can now come over here and have a bank of MPE sounds. Now, how do we configure the MPE input controller inside Cubase? So what we want to do is to go to your studio setup. And as we click here, we could click on a plus sign and we could see um, a multi, uh, an MPE input device. So here I have a Rolly Seaboard Rise 49. And as I wanted to press the keys on it, I could apply different settings. So if I wanted to have, just hit the note. If I apply pressure, we could have after touch. If I wanted to do stuff like change a filter, I could move my finger vertically on the key, or I could hold a key down and do pitch bend by moving horizontally. And we can see these changes applied. So what we want to do now is to just take a particular instrument and make sure that we have the note expression input. So I'm going to just do a recording of one particular MIDI note. And as I press down and apply pressure, or move vertically, I could change that sound. Or if I wanted to apply pitch changes, so now when we go to edit this one particular note, all that MIDI information has now been applied directly into our MIDI part here. So we could see where you see our horizontal is tuning. 
the vertical is our grain length and the pressure is the grain formant. And if I wanted to change these, I could click here, say no input assignment, say I want the horizontal to control volume. So this way we could have more expressive MIDI so that you could emulate instruments or come up with fresh and new exciting approaches in a MIDI domain. So as you can see, the new content, the new functionality in Groove Agent SE5, and the inclusion of support for MPE controllers allows you to have great MIDI functionality and the ability to create new and fresh exciting sounds in your Cubase Pro 10. If you found this video helpful, please feel free to like the video and to subscribe to the channel.